In today's episode of Can I Retire? This is gonna be an exciting case that you are definitely not gonna to wanna to miss out on. I caught something in my humble opinion that's completely wrong that Phil and Claire, not Dumpy, but hypothetical are doing that I bet you are doing as well. So we're gonna dive right into this case and show you exactly what uh, is happening here. So Phil works for company A, B, C and is making about $90,000 a year. I'm going to give him about a 2% increase in salary. He's almost 63 years of age and he wants to retire with Claire at the age of 67. Claire works for company XYZ, makes about $60,000 a year. Small increase in her wage as well too. She's 62, almost 63, and gonna retire at the same time with Phil. Let's dive down to what their social security benefits are going to be at the age of 67, which is their full retirement age. Phil will have a monthly benefit of $3,300, and I'm giving him a cost of living adjustment of only 2.25%. This is more on the conservative side. Um, if I want to, we can adjust it a little bit later and give him a little bit bigger increase. Same thing with Claire at 67. Her benefit will be $2,800, which we're gonna assume that they turn on um, at the retirement age of 67. We'll see what this looks like. Phil has a small pension with ABC of $250 a month. We're not gonna give that any sort of cost of living adjustment, but if something does happen to him, Claire's gonna get 100% of that benefit. Let's dive over to our assets, set this case up and see what it looks like. Phil has a 401k that he's contributing to, $1,500 a month, and has a current value of $300,000. And Claire has an old IRA that she's still contributing to here. She's converted that from an old company into an IRA. She's putting $600 a month into, and it has a value of about $200,000. Now, this right here is what I noticed. Things are going wrong. In my opinion, they have all of their money feel inside of these, his 401k are all mutual funds. There are not a whole lot of options he can do while he's still working with that company under the age of 59 and a half. He can't do any sort of in-service transfers um, for the most part while he's still working for that company. And he's limited on the choices that he can pick inside of that 401k. However, Claire has this self-directed IRA. She has many choices that she can choose from, unlimited across the board, but she's still choosing a ton of mutual funds. And I'll just tell you right up front, in my humble opinion, I'm not a big fan of mutual funds at all. There are so many snakes, demons, and dragons inside of mutual funds, meaning hidden cost, so many inefficiencies, it's absurd, in my opinion, to own mutual funds. Now, how do you know if you have a mutual fund? Most people don't even need to know what, how, to, how to check this out. So this is very simple. This is the first thing I want you to do. You go to look at your statements. Look at the statements, flip through the pages, and you're looking for the symbol. Maybe you've got some stocks in there that you recognize. Maybe it's a Walmart. This will say WMT or if it's a Tyson stock or whatever those individual stocks are. But you're looking for the mutual funds. Usually they're a five letter symbol ending in the letter X. So it'd be something like A, B, C, D, X, right? If you have mutual funds, you need to ask your advisor why. In my opinion, there's so many inefficiencies and so many better things that you could be doing with your money dump the mutual or dump the mutual funds get them out of there there's no reason you should have them they are dinosaurs moving on that's what i'm done with my rant coming down to number three i've got a brokerage account jointly owned between phil and claire and they've got a hundred thousand dollars in that account they're not putting any extra money into it they have a five percent cd with seventy five thousand dollars in and they've got a cd four percent that has twenty five thousand dollars in it and then they've got a bank where they're checking the savings on it. And I'm not showing any money because um, in that account, because money comes in, money comes out, it changes quite frequently. Coming down to their protected assets, they have a home where their house is worth about a half a million dollars. And you can see a total net worth of about $1.2 million. $700,000 is liquid, half million dollar house, and $1.2 million in that fact that their house was completely paid for. So you ask Phil and Claire, hey, what do you want to do? How much money are you going to need in retirement? And they're thinking, hey, listen, we want to live on about $6,000 in today's dollars when we go to retire in about, what's that, four or five years from now at the age of 67. And we are going to use 3.27% for an inflation factor because $6,000 is not going to be the same in four or five years from now. 
I go to inflation calculator and you can quickly see that the 110 year average is 3.27. There's always fun arguments about how the inflation is calculated. Um, we can adjust that to whatever you want to when we're running your scenario for your individual family, your specific financial plan, but I'm gonna use that as a starting point. So if I take $6,000, throw it to the calculator here. Let's just see if they run out of money, right? Obviously nobody ever wants to run out of money and be a burden on loved ones. So you can see at the age of 100 in the year 2062, they still have almost two and a half million dollars. They don't have a problem here. But let's see where this money is coming from that they're gonna maintain the standard of living. So you can see the year 2029, they're both 67 years of age. They took their boxes into work. They cleared out their decks. They went home and here's where we're gonna turn on income from. So they've got Phil's pension of $250. Social Security is now $6,100. And you can see in this particular row, if I go down each, uh, in this column, if I go down each row, you can see that cost of living adjustment for Social Security. So in year one, it's $6,100, but at the age of 68, it's $6,237. At the age of 69, it's $6,378, and so on, and so on, and so on. So if I come out here, that $6,000 they need in today's dollars is going to feel more like $7,100 in the near future. And at that three plus percent inflation, you're gonna see in 2030, that year it's gonna feel like $7,300, $7,500. Those, so we've got that inflation factor built in here. So they're going to need about $768 in that first year per month to maintain their standard of living. Right? They've got the pension, they've got the two social securities, not quite enough what they need, so they're gonna have to start dipping into some assets. So if you can see, if we do that, here's their assets out the far right over here, and you can see money coming out, but the account value is still growing very modestly for them over their retirement years. And as the inflation gets a little bit steeper here, as time goes on, you can kind of slowly see what that account value looks like all the way out to the age of 100. They still have $2.5 million. And that's is if all goes perfectly well. And we all know that nothing ever goes perfectly well. So if I come out and we stress test this portfolio, we say, hey, listen, what happens if when they retire at the age of 67, we have one, two, three bad years in the stock market. So here we are at the age of 67, we come out here and we have a negative 10% rate of return. And then at the age of 68, we have a negative 13% rate of return. And then in the third year, right after retirement, a negative 23% rate of return. What does that look like to the portfolio while we're still pulling money out? Not saying that you should, but something you definitely should be prepared for. So it's probably gonna come down here and it looks like they still don't outlive any money. They still make it to age 100, um, but you certainly wanna monitor that to make sure that if money does run out a little bit earlier, what adjustments are you going to need to be making along the way? Now, the big thing for Phil and Claire that we caught in their particular case in, that I clearly mentioned is their mutual funds. Again, I'm not a big fan of mutual funds. The thing I want you to get out of this short video today is, is stop this video right now. Don't even watch the rest of it if you don't want to. I want you just to go to your statements and see if you have any mutual funds of any kind. And if you do, you need to give us a call. You need to reach out to your advisor. You need to do something about them. In my humble opinion, there's so many better other equities that you could possibly um, have. For the most part, I don't know you specifically for compliance reasons, um, but for most people, there are better options than holding high cost, expensive, the snakes, the dreamings, and the dragons, mutual funds, in my opinion. So also you wanna make sure that you have enough life insurance um, if that's protected for yourself. And then also in your planning, make sure that one of the big reasons of uh, a financial plan falling apart is not having some sort of their healthcare and or long-term care and insurance along the way. So make sure those are taken care of. Today's video is simply about, hey, um, how are you doing? Take a look at the money, making sure that you're okay income wise, you're never gonna outlive money. Two, are your investments in the right spot? And maybe the money's in the right spot, but I just can't stand the mutual funds if you didn't get that point across today's video at all. Um, go look at them. Again, it ends in an X on this symbol on your statement, A, B, C, D, X, elemental P, X, right? See if you have mutual funds, you need to make a change and get out of those things, they are dinosaurs. And as I always say at every single video, at the very end, always consult a licensed professional who understands your family's specific goals and dreams.